When I was planning day trips for my holiday in Malawi, I completely ignored the kilometers or miles between cities. I thought Malawi is a small country, so it shouldn't take long to get from one city to another if they're in the same region, right? Well, I was so wrong about this. I know you're thinking you could have just checked Google Maps on how long it takes to get from one place to another, but this is a developing country, so a lot of things are still not online. Some businesses would have their information on Facebook rather than an actual website. So if you don't know the names, it can be quite hard to search, especially with hotels and restaurants. The location distances available on Google usually are inaccurate. Sometimes they are underestimated or overestimated. Also, most local drivers don't use GPS or Google Maps. They would ask for directions from pedestrians or other drivers. So with the unavailability of a lot of locations and the GPS inaccuracy, it makes it really easy not to rely on Google Maps in Malawi. For example, I went on a trip from the capital Lilongwe to Deza, a neighboring district. The exact locations are not available on Google Maps to demonstrate the distance between. Most roads don't have official names and houses don't have door numbers, so I will use the closest available locations to demonstrate. On Google, if I search for Lilongwe Girls Secondary School to Deza District Hospital, it shows me that it's an hour 28 minute drive and the distance is about 85 kilometers, which is not too bad. However, this journey took over two hours without traffic because when you get to Deza District Hospital, you have another 20 minute drive to the actual destination, where in this case, there's no information about it online, which makes the journey even longer than expected. Also keep in mind that Google underestimated the travel time between the available locations. This is the case with a lot of places in Malawi. Google says one thing and the distance says the other. That's why most people still rely on asking for directions from locals. It takes long drives to get to a lot of places and Malawians can easily drive six hour journeys from city to city. But when you see Malawi on the map, it doesn't look big enough to be having these types of distances. Another thing I made note of is that it looks sparsely populated for a small country that has over 20 million citizens. So is Malawi really as small as it appears on the map? Is the map that we use just distorted? Is it because the neighboring countries, Mozambique, Zambia and Tanzania are a lot bigger than Malawi, so they make Malawi look even smaller. One way we can understand the true size of Malawi in comparison to other countries is with a combination of maths, geography and history. As we all know, Earth is a globe, so it's not easy to project its surface area on a 2D map. It involves some complex mathematics in order to do so. There are a lot of 2D map projections, but they're all distorted in one way or another. The most commonly used 2D map projection is the Mercator projection. It was developed by a Flemish map maker called Gerardus Mercator in 1569. This is the original illustration of the Mercator projection. During this time, the Americas weren't fully surveyed, both Antarctica and Australia were not discovered yet by Europeans. Despite the missing details we now know of, this projection was revolutionary. It helped sailors and navigators plot straight routes to destinations. This is because straight lines on the Mercator projection are lines of constant true bearing. With earlier maps, sailors had to constantly recalculate routes, which took a lot of time. Since Mercator introduced this projection in 1569, other projections have been made using the same formula, just with a few new details, especially with the introduction of satellites. This projection you're looking at is the Mercator web version. The Mercator is still the most used projection because it preserves angles and shapes of small areas, so it shows the true shapes of countries. However, its biggest flaw is that it exaggerates the sizes of countries as they move away from the equator. For example, this map shows the Mercator sizes in the lighter color and the true size of the countries in the darker color. As you can see, North America, Europe, North Africa and some parts of Asia appear bigger on the Mercator projection than they actually are. This is the same case with the countries closer to the South Pole in South America, Africa and Oceania. So, what does this mean for the countries near the equator? Well, let's look at Malawi for example. You really have to squint to see it on the map. But, 
it has a land mass of 118,480 square kilometers. This makes it bigger than a lot of countries in Europe. If we kept the Mercator formula but move Malawi closer to the equator, it gets even smaller. But if we move it further away from the equator, it starts getting bigger. Here it stretches from the north to the south of Egypt. If we move it to Western Europe, it stretches from the Netherlands all the way down to the north of Italy. On the British Isles, it stretches from the north to the south of Great Britain. If we look at land masses of the Netherlands, Belgium, Luxembourg and Switzerland, these are very small countries compared to Malawi. So if they were located near the equator, they would appear even smaller with this projection. Malawi is bigger than all of these countries combined, but it does not appear this way on the map. There are a lot of criticisms about this map. The biggest is the one we've discussed, that it exaggerates areas far from the equator. Others argue that it's a colonial tactic to make Europe and North America appear larger than they are to give white nations supremacy. So why are we still using this projection? In simple words, it's good at showing directions, but not good if you want to see the real sizes of countries or continents. Also, this projection was invented for navigation purposes, and most ships are still using this map, so I guess it's still one of the best ones for sailing. So, which 2D map projection is the most accurate? The orthograph is known to be the most accurate when it comes to size. It was invented by Hajime Narukawa, a Japanese architect in 1999. So, if this map preserves size, why are we not using it? Well, it still has flaws. The locations of the areas are not very accurate. If we look at Antarctica, it looks like it's extremely close to South America, but this is not the case. The angles are not perfect either. Brazil looks extremely distorted. So, in simple words, it's accurate but not perfect. As I said, it takes complex maths to create a projection, so a perfect 2D projection does not exist. The only perfect projection we have is, of course, our globe in 3D. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Please comment down below and tell me what you think about the map distortion. Like, share and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.